Hi everyone, uh, I'm here, I've just spent the day at the Catuso Primary School, which is the first primary school that School for Life built here, and I'm here not just by myself, um, I'm here with Jennifer, uh, and also Robert, Hi. and can you introduce yourselves for everyone back in Australia? Hi Australia, my name is Jennifer, I was in Australia a few uh, months ago, I am the director of School for Life Schools back here in Uganda and with Robert. Uh, my name is Robert, I'm the head teacher of Katuso Primary School, uh, which was the first school to be built by School for Life in Uganda. Right, so um, as director, Jennifer is responsible for uh, all three of the schools, the one here at Katuso, um, which as Robert mentioned, it, it was built first, but it was built gradually. Wasn't it? What did it start yeah. with? Yeah, it started with one block and then later, like the following year, we had more four classrooms with a library and a, a school clinic. That's, that's great. So it started off with two classrooms and added on more and now um, it's over 300 students, isn't it? How many, how many classes is that? Uh, we are having nine classes all together. Mm. Uh, that is from seven primary classrooms and then two for nursery. Right, fantastic. And we started, you started the nursery um, a bit later. What was the reason why you decided the nursery would be helpful for the school? Uh, I think the director of schools can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you think, Jennifer? Oh, started yeah, we started this. with the pre-primary, mm. uh, but then we saw that it was more important for a child to start education at the early stages of three years, because those st that stage is very important for a child to start school. Mm. So that is why we started the ECD, which we call the Early Childhood Education Center, later on. Right, so I think probably something that people in Australia wouldn't maybe uh, understand is here we're in a very we're in a very rural area yeah. that's actually one of the reasons why you chose to build here mm -hmm. and so uh, would it be fair to say virtually all of the parents of our children here would be farmers would that be correct yes they are yes. subsistence farmers yes yeah. so therefore the families around here um, very few of themselves maybe went to school or maybe just very early school um, probably most of them would not speak English. No, no, no. none. So they only speak um, Luganda, which yes. is the local language here. Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason, you know, if they are not literate, they can't speak English. As soon as the children have been here, oh, maybe a few years, they are more literate yes. and yes. speak definitely speak better English mm -hmm. than their parents. So um, children are going to come to this school, and they don't have that background from home. Yes. They don't have parents who are going to be able to educate them and that's why having ECD is so helpful here. Exactly. Okay, yeah. so um, Robert, can you tell us a bit about, wh where are we walking right now? Where are we going? Uh, we are going to visit one of uh, our homes where our students come from so that we can look at maybe the, their family background, their siblings and their mm. parents mm. and where possible intervene the intervene with their parents, ask them some questions, how they are raising this child, how mm. does the child sleep, how does the child do homework, mm. and if there any assistance that the parents give to the kid when doing homework. Right, yeah. so is it, it's probably accurate to say that now that Katuso is the school, has been here for uh, how many years now? Uh, eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Um, it really is actually quite a substantial part of the community mm -hmm. and all of the different families who live here. Um, like you even have that, that water pump. Yeah. And that's yeah. something which is for the entire community, not just the school to use. Yeah. Yes. Right, and what other ways, I mean, you were telling me earlier today um, that you actually have to understand what needs the community has and then you actually you and the other teachers reach out into the community um, to try and help them with that can you tell me about some of those things uh, uh, this morning as I was talking to you I told you that we do community outreach whereby we have programs like raising voices hmm. we cite out communities and for instance find out what's their need if their need is maybe to sensitize them about child rights we hmm. move on a theme of child rights we go through drama and uh, drama and uh, like uh, other means that would attract their attention. Mm. So we dramatize to them the importance of, for instance, having good ch children rights and how to protect the children mm. at home, even on the way to school. Mm. And if we find that maybe the challenge is 
family violence, we go on a theme of violence mm. to educate them why they shouldn't violate either their children or their wives mm. or their husbands. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's really, you know, after this many years, it's having, uh, I think it's pretty fair to say, a very substantial impact on the way that the whole community interacts, even with itself. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it actually has that impact. Uh, Jennifer, you've been here since the beginning. Yes. Um, you know, some of the staff have just come on because the secondary school was just built. Yeah. Um, but you've been here since the start. What's one of the hardest things that... Um, you had to deal with in starting a school from scratch. What was difficult? <laughs> I had to deal with a lot, <laughs> but some of these were We came into an area where parents themselves were not educated mm -hmm. and um, There was a lot of domestic abuse domestic violence. There was a lot of child abuse um, Violence basically mm. so I had to deal with the teaching of the child in class and also teaching the community itself mm. the importance of education, the importance of a child staying in school, and also like the gender based violence issues. Mm. Like, parents believed in a girl child would only go to school up to primary four and then send them off for marriage. Mm. So, I had to come in, we had to come in and step into that and sensitize parents and show them the importance. It was not really an easy job, <laughs> but we are still moving on. Mm. I would say we are at least 80 percent successful mm. yeah that's fantastic now um I, I really wanted to introduce you to Robert and to Jennifer. They're doing such incredible work here. And it's also really important that um, everyone back home understands that this is not, it's not as though people coming from outside the country can come in and say, we know what this country needs. We know how to fix this community. It really has to be the locals who understand the issues. Exactly. And also how to be culturally sensitive mm -hmm. about giving them the help that they need. Um, not to mention the fact that because people in the community don't speak English, yep. someone like me would not be very useful out here. Um, but we're going to be finishing our walk um, into this village shortly. It's certainly by no means um, one of the furthest villages that the children walk from because um, I, I have to go back home after this, so we've got to finish the walk back. Um, but this just gives you a sense. I mean, if you have a look at this, this area in front of us, I'm going to turn around so you can see where we're walking. Um, we're just sort of going down this dirt path and um, people are, these are sort of what the um, dwellings look like and, um, you know, it definitely is a far cry from kind of what most people in Australia think of when they think I walk to school. Um, this is a very different kind of premise. So uh, I hope um, you've gained a bit of insight. I want to say a big thank you to Robert and Jennifer for being so welcome and, and our little friends over here. Hi. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll, I'll see you guys soon and I've got lots more to share because the work here in Uganda needs a lot of support. Um, you know, it was a challenge to start these schools but there are still many challenges yeah. to be faced. So thanks guys, talk to you soon. Ciao.